Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Ellis, and today I want to talk about lipogenesis. That is the manufacture of fat from non-fat sources. And the primary source for making fat is glucose or blood sugar, carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are converted into body fat. And this process occurs fairly rapidly and very strongly. There is conflicting evidence about it and research, but in 1999, Dr. R.R. R. Wolf, in 1998, did a very convincing study using multiple modalities to show the presence of lipogenesis in humans. Now, it was interesting. The other day, I did a video, and I had a couple young bucks come in and make some comments asking me about de novo lipogenesis, that's what it's called, de novo lipogenesis, and saying and telling me that this does not happen in humans. So I asked them to go get this paper from Dr. Wolf and read it and come back and make a commentary. They chose, however, to attack me personally and to make the comments about how I don't know anything. Now, I've been studying lipogenesis for 30 years. I think I do know something about it. And because of my stance on the hazards of carbohydrates and the glucose they yield and that glucose getting converted to body fat, this really has made some interest for me. Now, one of the basic theories that I really enjoy about controlling food intake is the concept of fuel partitioning. And that is the idea that food can either be stored or it can be burned. Now, carbohydrate sets up a nutritional and hormonal profile that forces food to be stored, primarily as body fat. And it shuts down the pathways of burning. And then it turns out that that fuel is no longer available and people actually overeat. So if you want to know what the overeating epidemic is coming from, it's because food is being partitioned into storage. And as body fat levels increase, food intake also increases. Getting fat, accumulating body fat, always occurs before the overeating phenomena. Always occurs before the overeating phenomena. So the overeating phenomena is driven by the accumulation of body fat because it's being partitioned into storage. And that process is called lipogenesis. And it's being driven by carbohydrate and the associated insulin. And the insulin glucagon ratio determines all this. So the young bucks were wrong. I told them they were wrong. They weren't happy with that. They needed to, I guess, prove to themselves that they knew more than I did. And I even gave them the opportunity to do some substantive information to prove their case, but they chose not to, and we didn't get along well. <laughs> so anyway, I'm here to tell you that lipogenesis is a for real phenomenon. Uh, Wolf measured it and found that with carbohydrate overfeeding, that the body could manufacture 170 grams of fat per day. So that's a half a pound. A half a pound of fat a day could be manufactured. Now the vast majority of it, 80, 90, I'm sorry, 98 percent of it occurred in adipose tissue and only 2 percent in liver. So liver is not the primary site for the production of fat from carbohydrate. So lipogenesis is occurring primarily in white adipose tissue and it can be quite a powerful stimulus, and you can see how quickly one can get very fat from the overeating of carbohydrate, which is what the vast majority of people do, overeat carbohydrate. On average, we're now eating about 500 more calories a day than we did 50 years ago, and that's largely in the form of carbohydrate. So excessive carbohydrate consumption, and it doesn't have to be excessive. It could be, it could match the calorie burn. It's going to favor a pathway of conversion into fat. That's just how the game works. So you have to understand your elementary biochemistry here to have a handle on how this thing goes. 
Okay, so that is lipogenesis, and I've covered my young guys who clearly do not know much, and they would argue this, and I'm sure I'll be getting comments from them again as they come out of the woodwork based on this video. Okay, I'm Dr. Dregos. Looking forward to it, boys.